Fall 2016 President's Assembly. We have up here, yeah. I want to take a minute, ask Dr. Shane Walker, one of our Board of Trustees, to stand up, take a bow. We have other, uh, other members of our Board of Trustees on campus. The board for ICPA is meeting here today. <coughs> Um, IRAPS is this weekend, just all kinds of groovy stuff. Let me tell you something, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. This week, I've been at Sherman College for 18 years. The importance of that, that's not the point. The importance of that is the transformation that has taken place at this institution in the last three years is staggering. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you look at things through your particular lens and your perspective. But the impact that Sherman College is having on the chiropractic profession and the lives of those individuals that we serve, the women, the children, the men, the families, the babies, the old people, is just tangible now. I travel the world, talking to different universities. This world is starving for what this institution has to offer. The curriculum that we have, the faculty that we have, the employees, the transformation and the impact that this institution is making and has made since Dr. Cordero became the president is staggering. So I want you to know that because it's important to know what you are part of. You're part of something that literally, not esoterically or theoretically, but that literally is changing the face of mankind. And I'm telling you, that just gives me the willy to be part of. The reason it's happening is because of leadership and commitment and vision. And I'm happy to tell you and introduce to you the president of Sherman College that has just empowered and been the catalyst behind that movement and he's going to share with you today where we're going so you better sit down and buckle your seat belts because the next several years you ain't going to believe it I don't think I've got another 18 years in me but I'm looking forward to the next yeah you know eight or ten <laughs> Dr. Edwin Cordero The, the first year that I was here, I went to Dr. Irwin's office and I said, listen, we're going we're gonna to light this place up. We're going to travel all over the world. We're going to go do things. And, you know, and I need your help because as far as the academic part of it, I'm not the pro at this. You're the pro at this. And so he goes, no problem, no problem. And a week later, I said, well, we got our first trip. And he's like, okay, where? We're going to Shanghai, China. And he's like, what? I don't think he's ever been on a plane ever, you know, going out of the country. And here his first trip is to Shanghai, you know, China. And so we get to China and he's like, well, you know, I'm very picky with my food. I can only eat certain things, my stomach or whatever. And I'm like, well, I don't know what we're going to eat. We're going as guests and whatever it is that they put in front of our plate, that's, that's what we're going to have to eat. And so he was concerned and I'm not making fun of him. I'm just sharing because I thought it was funny. He was concerned that he didn't know how to use, he didn't know how to use chopsticks. And so we get to the restaurant and he breaks out his chopsticks and, and he's practicing. And he, so I said, I said, Bob, you're making it so difficult. All you need to do is get the ones like the little kids that have the little the rubber band around it and you don't have to worry about it. He's like, no, he's hardcore. He wanted to use the regular chopsticks. And I tell you what, it took him like three days to learn how to pick up a grain of rice with the chopsticks. And by the end of the trip, obviously he was a pro at it. But you know what? That shows willingness to change. And I think that one of the things that we find in our profession is the fact that people are not willing to change. Which one of these can, yeah, I got it. Um, 
So, so I, get, I, I get the opportunity, and I'm blessed to travel the world, not only to rep represent Sherman College, but to represent the profession of chiropractic. And as I travel the world, one of the things that I see is that people are very uh, unwilling to make change. Heck, Sherman College was unwilling to make change when I got here three years ago. They thought I was crazy. They thought that you know, I was going to drive this institution into the ground. They thought, they thought, they thought, and now all of a sudden it's a different story because you know, we put action into the plan. We put action into the vision and, and the mission of the institution. And so what I'm hoping is that as, as a family member of this institution that you be open-minded as well because we're gonna share some things that are hopefully in the horizon here that are gonna be amazing, but guess what? People are uncomfortable with change. And so I, I want you to be uncomfortable because they say that comfort sucks. Anybody hear that before? I just made it up, but that's good, thank you. Thank you for that. But you know, we wanna be uncomfortable. We don't wanna be comfortable. We wanna be uncomfortable. And that's what allows us to grow. That's what allows us to move forward. That's what allows us to be who we are and be challenged and know that it's uncomfortable to, to, to take certain steps, but that's what allows us to move in the direction that we're supposed to move. So, yeah. Anyhow, I was going to show you a video. I'll just tell you what the video is about. Uh, so it's Reggie Gold in his last um, talk that he had at the IFCO in Panama several years ago. And I was, first of all, just blown away because I've heard of Reggie Gold. I didn't know who Reggie Gold was. And then when I was associated with, with Sherman, obviously he's one of the legends here in the institution. And I got a chance to just listen to the man. And what he was talking about was something very powerful. He was talking about that chiropractic is not what we think chiropractic is. And especially as students. And so he was talking in the video and he was saying that what chiropractic really is is about locating, analyzing, and correcting the vertebral subluxation. And so he was saying, if you treat somebody, that's not chiropractic. If you're taking care of somebody for their pain, that's not chiropractic. If you're taking care of somebody so they can feel better, that's not chiropractic. And he goes into this whole spiel, which I wish you can see it here, but he goes into this whole thing talking about what chiropractic is and what chiropractic is not. And this is the sad part. Most chiropractors don't know what chiropractic really is all about. And they think, they have this idea of what chiropractic should be, but they, they really don't know what it is. And so, as I get the opportunity to travel and speak to prospective students and to doctors and to people that have been in the profession for a long time, there's such a confusion amongst our profession. Oh, there it goes. Yay, Roberta, you can stay right there. I don't know what I would do without Roberta. <laughs> we have been here for its real purpose, which is not the treat of disease, not getting sick people well. The purpose of chiropractic is the correction of the is analyze the spine, looking for vertebral things, and when you find one, you apply those techniques to bring about the correction of things. That's chiropractic. <coughs> if you're not doing that, you're not practicing chiropractic. What are you practicing? The treatment of disease. Or you're practicing medicine. That, that's what, oh, where ch chiropractic went wrong. Some chiropractors found that by applying Chiropractic, sick people didn't get well. There are some sick people who don't get well by the application of chiropractic. Stop saying that we get sick people well. The power that made the body heal the body. Nonsense. The power that made the body can heal the body sometimes, but sometimes it fails. If your mission is to get sick people well, you're going to fail a lot of the time. If your mission is to locate correct vertebral subluxation, you'll be successful all the time. 
That's all you do. But God said, be an expert at what you do. Isn't that pretty cool? Be an expert at what you do. And not only be an expert at what you do, know what you do and what you don't do. And be able to draw a line that's going to distinguish you from any other chiropractor that's out there. And the only way that we're going to be able to know that is through the objectives of chiropractic. So, so there's several objectives in chiropractic. And Dr. Strauss speaks about this and he does it very eloquently. And he talks about three objectives that we as doctors of chiropractic should be aware of. And we should be able to own it and be able to share it not only with our staff and with the people that work for us in the office or work with us in the office, but to be able to do that as well with the, um, uh, with the, with the practice members that are coming into the practice. And the first one is real simple. The first objective is chiropractic is not medicine. And you would go, well, duh, really? Well, yes, really. Because if you go out right now into the chiropractic profession, 90% or maybe 95% of the chiropractors that are practicing, they think the chiropractic is part of medicine or somehow chiropractic is medicine. And you see them with their white jackets and you see them with their stethoscopes and you see them with their mask and you see them with their cervical gloves adjusting people because they don't want to touch people skin to skin. And so when you hear that comment, you go, well, that, that, that kind of makes sense. We know chiropractic is not medicine, but you know what? The rest of the world doesn't know this. And unless you tell your people that chiropractic is not medicine and you tell them what chiropractic is, then the people may not understand it either. And they may think that it's the same thing. So if somebody comes into your office and they have a headache and you go ahead and don't explain to them what chiropractic is and you give them an adjustment and their headache goes away, what happens to that patient? I can't hear. What happens to that patient? They leave. They leave. So if the person gets better in your office and they leave, what happens when the person comes in and you give them an adjustment and they don't get better? What happens to them? They leave. They leave. So they, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. If you get them better, they leave, and if you don't get them better, they leave as well. That's called the symptom practice. And the problem in the United States is the fact that the majority of the chiropractors are practiced from a symptom type of practice. If the pain goes away, I'm a great chiropractor. If the pain doesn't go away, I'm not good as a chiropractor. And so we create this weakness in our belief systems as chiropractors that if we don't understand what the objective is and we don't explain it to the patient clearly and with certainty, then as soon as that person gets better, they leave. As soon as they don't get better, they leave. And you're in this constant depressive mode because your patients are coming in and they're leaving out the other side of the door. Chiropractic is not medicine. The second objective, chiropractors locate, analyze, and correct vertebral subluxations. Thank God that that's taught here at this school. And that you guys are kind of like, well, duh, why not? That, that's, but you go to all the other 17 chiropractic schools in the United States, and I would say 16 maybe, and they look at you like you have three heads when you say that. What do you do as a chiropractor? I locate, analyze, and correct vertebral subluxations. And they look at you like, what? Dr. Dooley was just sharing something with me a few minutes ago that he had gone to a mission trip and he was talking to some of the students from the other schools and the one thing that he asked was, well, you know, do you guys know what principal is? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we know what principal is. Sure, sure, we're, we're from such and such cool. They, they teach us what principal is. And Dr. Dooley says, well, what is a principal chiropractor? Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what? And then he said, okay, well, what's principal number 24? Uh, uh, <laughs> So if you know what principle is, and you know what you do, and you're clear, and you and explain it to your patient, that patient is going to benefit, and you're going to stand out from the rest of the field because you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt what you do, what you don't do. So chiropractic is not medicine. Chiropractic is locate, analyze, and correct vertebral subluxations. And the third one is when you give a specific scientific chiropractic adjustment, you do it to allow the innate intelligence of the body to express more fe freely. You don't give the adjustment for them to feel better. You don't give the adjustment so the symptom goes away. You don't give the adjustment so they can say, oh my God, I've, now I'm into wellness because of the chiropractic adjustment. You give the adjustment for a specific reason. It's to allow the expression of innate intelligence to manifest in that individual. Now, this is the question that I was very confused, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys in this room is. 
Well, what if it doesn't work? What if the innate uh, uh, intelligence doesn't express and we see a result immediately? Does chiropractic then fail? Well, I know Dr. Shane and Dr. Armin and a lot of the practicing chiropractors here, you know, the faculty members know that every time you deliver a specific scientific chiropractic adjustment, does that patient always get the response immediately? What? No. no. So does that mean the chiropractic doesn't work? No. See, it's up to the body. It's up to the intelligence of the body to manifest and do whatever it needs to do with that force that we put into the body. So you are going to get a patient that you're going to adjust and you're going to see a miracle happen and you're going to have a patient that will probably be with you a year before that person starts to see any type of changes. And if you're not sure and you're, and you're not clear with the objectives of what you do, man, you're going to have a miserable practice. So one of the things that made it easy for me was when you locate, analyze, and correct the verbal subluxation, and you know that you gave a specific chiropractic adjustment, you step back, and when you step back, you become unattached to the result. Because if you're attached to the result, you're going to have ups and downs. When you're not attached to the result, it doesn't matter. I located it, I analyzed it, I corrected it, I, stu I stood back, and whatever happens is between that person and their innate intelligence. You're out of the equation completely. So if you understand the three objectives, and from day one you let those patients know exactly what is it that you do and what is it that you don't do, everybody benefits in the equation. You benefit because the people are going to respect your authority and they know what you, that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt. They're going to benefit because they understand it's going to take time. Principle number six. And they know that at least how their body is going to function and now there's a relationship where everybody benefits they refer people into your office and you have an amazing office so why am I saying this I'm, I'm preaching to the choir I'm saying this because there's a lot of people that come here from other schools that they transfer and they have this idea or this concept of what they think chiropractic is and what we do here at Sherman is totally different and the way that we explain it is totally different and so we don't want people to feel uncomfortable when they come from other institutions. We want to embrace them and accept them as family members. But we got to start with some premise. And the premise is this is what we do. This is, not, this is what we not do. These are the objectives. This is the way that we practice in our office. And as long as everybody's clear with that, we start to move forward. So I just wanted to open up a little bit because I wanted to, to kind of share that because I want you guys to understand that you are in the best chiropractic college out of not only the United States, but the entire world. And I can say that not because I'm the president here, because I get a chance to travel the entire world to go speak at all the different institutions to speak to students and doctors. And I'm telling you what, I'm floored sometimes what I hear from these institutions. I get together with the presidents. We get together three times a year with all the presidents from the chiropractic college. And I've said this before, but I'll repeat it. You don't know how many times I've thrown up in my mouth every time they say something that's so incongruent with what we believe. And I'm like, <laughs> I, it just, I throw up in my mouth and then I spit it out and, and then I let them know the way that I feel. <laughs> <laughs> because it's crazy. There's such a difference from this institution to this institution that it's just, it, it just blows my mind. And I think that sometimes when you're too comfortable and when you're surrounded by all these friends and families that we all think alike, you forget about what the real world is all about. And you forget about what those chiropractors that are graduating from these other institutions are all about. And you're afraid thinking that they may know more than you, that they got higher scores on their boards, or whatever it may be. But when it comes to chiropractic, when it comes to the science, the art, and the philosophy of chiropractic, you're not going to get it any place in the world better than you're getting it here at Sherman College. <clears throat> so this is, this is our vision statement. We answer to the 33 principles and effort to guard the sacred trust. Our vision at Sherman College of Chiropractic is to make a global impact by developing and equipping future doctors of chiropractic with the working knowledge of the philosophy, the art, the science of chiropractic by locating, analyzing, and correcting the vertebral subluxations, which ensures the preservation of our founding principles. You guys are the guardian of this sacred trust. The other 17 schools, I don't care what you've heard, they're not guarding the sacred trust. They're, they don't know what the principles are. And therefore, they're going out there, and whichever way the wind blows, they blow with the wind. 
Because they're not anchored. And who can anchor to an unanchored mind? <coughs> so we need to be sure that we own this. We are guarding the sacred trust. We are the ones that are going to stand fast, and we're the ones that are going to ensure that this profession will continue and create a legacy that will continue for another several hundred years, if possible. So, I wanted to give you a little update. This year alone, we've, um, we've given employment to over 20 new uh, people in this institution. 20 in all different departments, whether it's faculty, whether it's uh, on the staff, whether it's on the administrative part of it, 20. I don't think this institution ever hired 20 people in one year in the past history of the institution. But we're doing this for you guys. Now you're going to hear this, and I want to clarify this because I want to make sure that you understand. The institution has adopted, and we're going to talk about this a lot more, we've adopted something that I think is very important. And it's called being obsessed with student success. Being obsessed with student success. That doesn't mean that we're going to kiss your rear end as a student. Okay, so for those of you that might think that that's what it is, that's not what it's about. It's about ensuring that you have everything at your disposal to make you the best chiropractor that you can be. It's ensuring that the faculty is there for you to help you. It's ensuring that the techniques are here. It's ensuring that you have the best experience through this journey. A lot of you forget that this is a journey and that you should have fun through this journey. I had a student that transferred to another institution, and he said to me, he said, I can't handle the pressure. And I said, well, what are you talking about? You're a great student, you know, as far as academics. You know, you're doing good. It's not like you're failing. He says, I, I just can't. My pace is a slower pace. I can't just keep up with all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I respect that. And he transferred to another institution. I want to make sure that you don't leave this institution because you think that we are against you or we, you think that we're not here to help you. That's not the case. We want to be obsessed in knowing that whatever it is going to make you a better chiropractor, that we can at least provide it while you're here through this journey. Now, is it always going to be roses? No. I've been married for 34 years, and trust me, it's not all roses. <laughs> but I tell you what, I've had a great marriage in 34 years. And you can have a great experience going through this journey as well. And get out there and be proud to say, I graduated from Sherman College and I was supported through my journey because Sherman College is obsessed with my success. And so we've gone through training with this and now we're going to launch it as of January. We're going to launch this concept and we're going to go ahead and start sharing with you maybe a little bit more details of what this means. But I wanted to give you first the opportunity to know that we are obsessed with your success and we want to try to help you in every manner. But you have to take responsibility as well. Okay? You have to take responsibilities. As adults, you have to take responsibility. But we're going to do what we can to help you and to ensure your success. So we started over 20 new employees this year. Uh, fall of 16, where's my first quarter class? Why don't you stand up if you're here? My first quarter class. You stand up. Good. Do me a favor. Tell the rest of your class that this is not a good way to start when the president is doing his assembly and there's only 20 of you show up instead of 50 that we just started. So we had a class of 50 and we're really proud. You know, we continue to grow every single class and some of the employees go, oh my God, more students. We're obsessed with student success. We're hiring people because we want to help the faculty with their, with their workload as well and be able to give you guys what you deserve. And so we're grateful for the class and welcome for his quarter class. Showcase Sherman uh, is our opportunity as an institution to be able to welcome prospective students that are interested in coming into the profession. Now, I know you guys know, because most of you have done this, most students, before they pick an institution, they go to three or four different you know, uh, uh, chiropractic colleges just to check it out. And I'm going to tell you something. We're not the biggest. We're not the prettiest. But I tell you what, we're the most, the, the ones that are going to make the most impact in this profession. And so we're excited about moving. Yeah, that's good. So this Showcase Sherman weekend is a weekend that if you happen to know some people that are interested in chiropractic, 
then why don't you invite them to come? It's four times a year. This one in October is the 21st, uh, 21st to the 22nd. I think we have already 75 students registered for that event, and they continue to grow. So if you know somebody, tell them to come and check us out. Once they walk through the door, once they meet the ambassadors, once they meet the faculty, once they meet everybody that's part of this family, they fall in love with Sherman College. It's getting them here. And that's the way that we do that. And we do that four times a year. So if you go to the website right there, you can tell any student that's interested, say, hey, go to the website, and uh, there's the information. It's four times a year. It's every quarter. And that way they get an opportunity to spend two days here having a great experience and getting a chance to see if this is really what's for them or not. If it's not, perfect. If it is, we want to welcome them. So that's coming up October 21st and 22nd. So I want to share something with you that I think it's going to be real exciting. One of the things that Sherman College, unfortunately, for, throughout the years has been a little lacking is the facilities. These facilities are a little tired. They're a little worn down. Uh, they have a little high school feeling. The lockers look like from 1972 when they first opened this school. You know, there's a lot of things around here that unfortunately have been stuck in a time capsule. Now, I am a type of individual, uh, and I know that most of you are as well, that people look at you and they determine your success by the way you dress by the way that you look, by the car that you drive, by the watch that you wear, et cetera, et cetera. Now we know that doesn't matter. We know that, okay? But that's what people's perception are. And so when we have students that come here and then they go to five or six other universities that have 50, 60 million dollar renovations and they look at the state of art of everything, they go, oh my God, Sherman was great, but, and it's a farce because we know that we don't have to be flashy to be able to deliver the goods, to be able to, to provide the, 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 the uh, service that we do here and the, the, the level of uh, education. But it's important. And so what? What we're gonna do is this. We're in the process right now, and this is something in the beginning stages of working on renovating the campus. <coughs> working on ensuring that we have more classrooms, working on that the hallways may be a little bit wider so more than one person at a time can go by with their book bag instead of knocking all the pictures down on the, on the honor wall over there. So we're working on maybe to have more stalls in the bathrooms so you don't have to wait in line you know, while you have to go do number three. So um, you guys got that, that's good. And so we're working on the, doing the, this renovation process. So the first step that we did is we hired a company called Brailsford and Dunleavy, and they came in and they started to do their due diligence. They spoke to the faculty, they spoke to the staff, they spoke to the students, they spoke to the entire Sherman family. And they came up with the plan that's amazing for a renovation project that we're in the process of looking into. So I just want you to know that unfortunately the ones that are up in, in uh, upper class, maybe 12 to 13, you may not be able to see this, but you're going to be proud of what we're going to do here. We are going to make this place something that's going to be amazing. So I know the first thing that's coming to your mind, oh man, there goes my tuition. I know they're going to raise my tuition now to make this happen. Does anybody think that way? Or am I the only one? Okay, let's be honest. Okay, let's be honest. I know they're going to raise my tuition. Well, guess what? That's not the intention. Well, there's no way that even if we tripled your tuition that we can afford to pay for the type of project that we want to do. We actually have to go out and do fundraising and raise this money. And we have to make sure that we have the majority of this money even before we let people know. Now, I'm letting you guys know because you guys are the family. And you need to know what's going on. We're in the process of this, but this is what we call the quiet phase. This is where we hire people. This is where we look at the projects. This is where we look and see if it is or if it's not what we need. This is where we go all this process and then go ask people for some money. And then once we can collect a certain percentage of money, then we announce this to the rest of the world. So please don't put this on Facebook today. Great, we're having a... That's not what the purpose of this is. It's so you know what's happening. One thing with me that you always know, I'm always transparent. I'm not going to slap you with something and surprise you. Whatever it is that we're doing, we're going to share it as a family and we're going to know what's happening. So we know for a fact that, um, that this project is going to happen. That may take a year, it may take two, it may take three. We don't know exactly when, but we're in the process of doing this. And most of you, maybe the first quarter students that are here, are definitely going to benefit from what we're going to do. But you're going to be proud that you were part of a legacy that Sherman College is 
the growth process that we're going through, through the renovation, possibility of having a, a auditorium for ourselves so we can have these type of events in a beautiful auditorium. We can have our graduations in our own auditorium. We can have uh, a guest speaker come and we can fit four or five, 800 people in a room. You know, which would be really, really nice to be able to do that. So we're working on that. Now, this is the part that I want to make sure that people understand. Just because we're growing, just because we're moving forward, just because we're renovating, just because we're doing all these different things, we're not staying away on our focus of what Sherman College stands for. We're not going away from our history. We're not moving in another direction. We're not buying those brand new digital bodies that you have no connection to. We want you to still have that where you can touch that body and feel it and smell it. Right, Dr. Rivera? <laughs> so we still, we still want to stand and conserve our history in our, in our culture that Dr. Gilardi, obviously, and his team started when they opened up the institution. It's not that we're changing away from that. It's that we can't stay just here. Because if we just stay here, we can't grow. Unfortunately, the, the institution has been wearing blinders for so long that if they say something, they're going to offend somebody. If they do this, somebody's going to talk about it. I don't care what people think about us. As long as we stand for our history and our culture, and we're providing a place, an institution, where you're going to be taught by the best faculty, you're going to be taught by the best technique uh, uh, instructors in our profession, which right now we have three diplomats that are here teaching you guys. And let me tell you something, you don't see that in any other chiropractic college. So we want to stand fast on our history and our culture, but we want to grow. And we want to allow this institution to be in its rightful place. So I said in 2013 that I was going to take Sherman College and make it the preeminent chiropractic college, not only in the US, but around the world. And right now, Dr. Irwin was sharing about that, and that's true. And it's not to brag, it's a together with the team of individuals that we have here, Every place around the world right now, they know Sherman College. I just got back from Geneva, Switzerland, and I was at the, w, at the World Health Organization, and I was there with another group of uh, chiropractic institutions, and we went to go speak to the World Health Organization, and this is what's really cool. They had four people come to speak to us, and so we're sitting there listening to them, and this is what they were talking about. They were talking about health promotion, health promotion health promotion. Not one word came out of their mouth about treating disease and sickness, which is what the World Health Organization basically does. They have 175 countries that they manage. And obviously when you go to third world countries, the disease and sickness and situations are happening and that's what they focus on. But these four individuals that spoke to us said, no, we want to now shift and go into health promotion. And it was like, man, they were talking our language. And so we were there to be represented from the chiropractic profession and to let them know, guess what we can do? We can help you. And so now we're working on some projects with them. It's going to take several years. It doesn't happen overnight. But at least we're at the table. Sherman College has never been at the table, especially in anything that has to do with global impact. And you know what, Sherman College was at the table and will continue to be at the table. So you guys really need to be proud of this institution and what we've done, what we're doing, and what we're going to do as well. <clears throat> so we have an, our, our IRAPs, October 8th and 9th. This is free for students and employees. This event has started as a small event and now it's kind of like a premier event in the chiropractic profession. We have people that are going to come and present papers on philosophy. We have people that are going to come and present papers on, on um, research. And it is the place to be. It's gotten so big that we can't do it here at the school anymore. We're actually moving into the Marriott. So we're, we're providing that a place where it's comfortable, a place where it's professional, a place where more people can come and attend. So please, if you're not doing anything this weekend, I don't care if you are doing something, still show up. It's October 8th and 9th, um, which is this weekend, at the Marriott. 
And uh, if anything, you can talk to Jillian and her team, uh, Dr. Kirsch and her team, so that way you guys get your registration out of the way. Our, our keynote speakers are Eric Russell, DC, and a diplomat in, in philosophy. And Matt Hudson, who's not our Matt, uh, it's another Matt Hudson is going to be speaking there uh, as well. And then a whole bunch of people from all over the world that are coming to present. So please come and participate. And I want to share something with you real quick. These are the things that most people don't take advantage of because you're too busy studying or you're too busy going to the movies or you're too busy doing whatever and you're going to meet the best of the best of the best of our profession are going to be there presenting. And how nice is it for you to sit down next to Christopher Kent and be able to go, wow, Dr. Kent, I know who he is. You know, I was, and I attended this, this seminar or whoever the person may be. So we're bringing in some heavy hitters from all over the world. So please take advantage of it this weekend and come and check us out. Anybody know about the ACP program? Anybody? Okay. ACP C program is the first year uh, prerequisite for you to get your diploma in philosophy. And we're the only school that does that. We're the only school that teaches the ACP program. It used to be Palmer. I don't think that they do that anymore. We're the only school that does that. So it isn't that you have to go after your diploma, but at least if you really want to get a better understanding, the ACP program is something that I highly recommend. We've been doing it for many years, and a lot of our faculty have been through the, through the ACP program. Here's the dates, October, January, uh, May, July, and October, and it's something that you know I think that you definitely would benefit. Is Dr. Deccan here? Do, do the students get a discount for that, Dr. Deccan? Yeah. Okay, so there's, di there's discounts. And let me, tell you, let me tell you what that means. If this costs $1,000 a module, you're going to get it for a lot cheaper. And there's no difference between you and the doctor that's paying $1,000 at the same place. So now is the time to take advantage if you're interested in doing those things. This quarter, I was talking to Rolando Rivera, our director of recruitment, and this quarter our recruiting team here at Sherman is doing 125 events this quarter. That's a lot of events. A lot of events. And they're all over the place. All over the place from Latin America to Central America to the United States, Panama. So they're really all over the place and I'm very proud of our recruiting team. That's why you're seeing the growth of the school. We have three recruiters right now. We're in the process of hiring one or two more and we're gonna just get them out there so people know who we are, what we stand for, and if they're interested in coming to Sherman and qualify, then you know they're gonna come. So excited about what's going on with our recruiting team. Donde está el presidente? Anybody know what that means? Where is the president? And the president is everywhere but Sherman College. That's what somebody told me the other day. Said, what are you doing here? And I was like, you get it. You know, because if I'm here, I'm not doing my job. And so basically, it's been a lot of fun. But I'm going to tell you something. It, it, it's really, most people see the highlight reel of what, of what my travels are. They go, oh, Dr. Cordero's in Switzerland. Oh, Dr. Cordero's in Mexico or wherever it may be. They don't realize the hours that you have to wait at the airport, the missed flights, the missed connections, uh, how many times you have to wait on the tarmac for four hours because the plane broke down, you know, and they're waiting for a part. How many times I had these landings where the plane comes in and it can't land and it goes around for three hours and then they land in another country? because they're running out of fuel, and the pilot goes, hey, by the way, we're, we're going to Colombia because we ran out of fuel, and Colombia is an hour and a way, an hour and a half away. And so a lot of people don't see that part of it, and I'm not saying that so you can feel bad for me. What I'm saying is I'm working just as hard, and my team is working just as hard as you guys are working through the journey that you're going through here as, as being a student. And we do it because we want the institution and you guys to succeed. We want to be obsessed with your success. And therefore, traveling all over the place has been a lot of fun, but there's a lot of moments that I like sleeping in my own bed. Uh, so, and I want to share a real, a real funny uh, number here. The past two and a half years, I've flown a million miles. And that doesn't sound like a lot. So I Googled uh, circumference the world in a flight, now, flying around the world, how many miles? And it was 24,900 miles to go one time around the world. So if you take that number and divide it by a million miles, I've traveled the world 40 times already in two years. Bringing the message of chiropractic, bringing the message of Sherman College to people that don't know who we are. And I'm really proud of that because, you know, we want to ensure that this is the preeminent chiropractic college, not only in the U.S., but around the world as well. Can you put that last video? I want you guys to do me a favor. Everybody take your phone out.
because I know you all got a phone. And I want you to check in at Sherman College, okay? Oh, today you left it, right? I want you to check in Sherman College. We want to start a buzz in, 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 in the media here. We want people to know that we are proud of being at Sherman College. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to check in. And then there's a video that I'm going to play, which is our recruitment video that we did several years ago. Most of you don't even know that this video exists. Most of you do. There is a link here on the video. Don't start it yet. There's a link here. I want you to link that video to your media and let people know who we are. This is an amazing video. It's two minutes. I think it's a fantastic video. The guy that produced this video is the gentleman that produced the movie for Adjusted with Dr. Jay Komarek. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie yet, but it's amazing. He's the same guy, Sean Nipper. His wife happens to be a chiropractor, and he is a talented producer, and he did this uh, video for us a couple years ago, and I want to be able to flood the media with this video because I think it's awesome. So if you can just play it. Anyway, cranking it up. I think some of the reasons why you would want to come. The TV remote. Number one, the philosophy. You need to have a good, strong foundation. And Sherman gives you that perfect foundation. I chose Sherman for the philosophy of chiropractic. I think you should come to Sherman because Sherman has the really the best base for the principle of chiropractic. How we're able to get the ground in. Foundation to go out there and really educate people on the risk of that. I thought you were going to share something for a minute or two. You sure? One of the biggest things that I also found about when I was researching it is technique. Everyone said if you want to learn chiropractic technique, this is the school to go to. The reason I chose Sherman is because you do get the philosophy, which is the backbone of chiropractic. As a student that's interested in coming into Sherman College, there's several benefits. Number one is that you're going to come to an institution that's been around for over 40 years. Number two is that you're going to learn the principles and the truth of the philosophy, the science, and the art of our profession. And you're going to be able then to take that experience and practice it and learn and develop those skills in our health center that we have right here on campus that's open to the community. It's easy to get lost in large classrooms and we don't have that. You have intimate settings with your teachers to get that perfect adjustment to get your hands just right. It's so easy to relax with everyone in class, and as good as it can be, and as struggling as it can be, uh, you know, that helps you a lot, and because we're all here with the same person, same focus. Sherman is the best place to learn about the experienced faculty that own local businesses here in town, chiropractic offices, that are coming to teach and give of their time. All the more see all the faculty are equally accessible and willing to talk to the students. Uh, small class sizes, instructors that honestly care about you walk down the hall every day, every instructor knows who I am, very quickly we all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sherman is chiropractic. You can send, yeah. We have the most amazing faculty that are committed in ensuring that they share their wisdom and their years of experience with you guys. We have an amazing staff. We have amazing people that are just working to make sure that this institution on the outside, on the inside, looks as beautiful as it can. We have a team of administrators, the executive team, that we want to ensure your student success and that we're obsessed with that student, student success. So there's no excuse for you not to succeed and for you to move forward. A lot of you have pride and when you need help, you don't get the help and you don't ask for the help. We have tutoring. We have ways of helping you. If you don't tell us, we don't know. Don't ever leave here because you, and say, well, Sherman never gave me this. We're here to ensure your success. And whatever it is, we're here to help you. So please take advantage of it. Move the pride to the side. Let's get this done. Let's move forward. Let's make this institution the best institution chiropractically that it can be.
And I want to share one last thing. We're going to start some construction process here within the next three or four months. And hopefully it's going to be done prior to Lyceum. And we want to do that because there was a history of collecting money and projects not getting done. And when I came in, I said, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to collect money, projects are going to get done. So the Student Health Center got renovated because we asked for money, and we got it done. The Health Center, we asked for money, we're getting it done, we're still in the process of finishing it up. So we're putting our, our money where our mouth is, and we're going to do the things that need to be done. We're going to be working on the Olson Building and the Health Center within the next three or four months to ensure that everything that's there that hasn't been done is done. So that way we can start the process of moving this institution to where it needs to be. And so part of this is that we get it done by Lyceum. So when we have 700, 800, 1,000 people on campus, they start to see the renovating process. They start to see that we're moving forward that we're putting our money where our mouth is, and not only where they're going to be the best at the chiropractic education as far as the science, the art, and this, uh, the, the philosophy, but that we're starting to put money into our institution as well so they can see that this is the preeminent chiropractic college in the world. So I want to encourage you guys to continue to your journey, to be able to do what you need to do. Count on us. Come and see us. Ask for help. Do whatever you need to do. Be part of this family. Please put this link on there, the, the one towards uh, the, uh, the testimonial uh, video there. I think it's important for people to see who we are and hear our heart about what we you know, want for the profession and for Sherman College. So thank you guys very much. God bless you.